Welcome everybody. Uh, this is the um, uh, meeting of the Metropolitan Water District Representative Caucus and the special meeting of the Board of Directors in West Basin Municipal Water District. And to start off the meeting, we'll start off with the Pledge of Allegiance, which can be shown to lead us in. Thank you, Director. Good afternoon. If you could please place your hand over your heart and repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the United States and and the the public, public, which stands for the nation, 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 Director Gloria Gray. Here. Here. Director Harold Williams. Here. And President Desi Alvarez. Here. Have a form. Uh, moving on to public comments. Do we have any public comments today? President Alvarez, we have not received any uh, prior request for public comment here today, though this meeting is being held both in person and virtual. If anybody would like to make public comment, please indicate so now by raising your virtual hand. And I do not see any requests for public comment. Okay, then we'll move on to our uh, discussion items. And the first item up is an update on the metropolitan uh, proposed biannual budget and rate. General manager, would you like to introduce that item? Happy to do so. Uh, First and foremost, let me point out that this is a continued a continuation of our conversation from our last month's uh, Metropolitan Water District Caucus. Uh, as you mentioned, it is related to the proposed biennial budget. Uh, again, for this presentation, we have a team uh, of Metropolitan Water District's uh, experts uh, in finance here to present this item. Uh, and I'll begin by uh, introducing Katana Kassain, uh, the Assistant General Manager and Chief Financial Officer of Metropolitan Water District, who again uh, has her entire team here today, I believe. So, uh, Katano, take it away. Thank you, Jay, and I appreciate you inviting me back. And thank you, board, for letting us have this opportunity to uh, talk to you about our budget again. So, what you have in front of you is a workshop for presentation. Now, the last time we were here, we talked about the drivers and how we got to the budget and the deficit and all that. This is really about all the assumptions. And uh, I think the last time we touched on them a bit. So we have the option of going to the slides and talk a little bit about it, or we can just take questions from the board. So I don't know if the board has any preference. I think it would be best if you kind of uh, did a, you know, just a quick overview of the slides, but just so that everybody can remember or uh, Thank you. Uh, refresh their mind as to where we are and what we're looking at. Thank you. Thank you. So I, as I call on to Anna to present a few slides and really about maybe four or five slides of where we are, the board did make a decision to move forward with three, two to three of this, uh, probably around three, three to four, sorry, two, three to four of these assumptions. So we're going to be bringing those back to the board next meeting. And I know that we got a letter from uh, West Basin, and thank you for your support. And I know that you also wanted to actually lower our, our uh, water transaction assumption even lower than what the board is currently contemplating at 1.34 million acre feet of water. And so we appreciate your support. And as we go through the slides, you will see that really what we're balancing to is the concern about this budget gap is about 30 at th 13 and 8, which is about 21% overall for the next two years, that gap is where, what we're trying to figure out how to pay. So that gap doesn't change. So when you see numbers of property tax against rates, it's really trying to balance those two numbers, to that 21% to get to the right number between property tax and our water rate, our, our water rate transactions. So that's what we're trying to determine. So they, it does not change the gap. It does not change the need. It really changes how we're trying to 
pay for it. So Arnaud, if you're ready, you can go through a few more slides and then we can discuss. Yeah, certainly I'll um, go through a few of these here. I think we can advance a couple of slides. Uh, so next slide, yeah, we can skip to next. 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 OK, yeah, let's stop here for a little bit. So these are the uh, 10 alternatives that were last discussed in uh, workshop number four as part of the budget. Um, I won't go through each of these in detail, but you can see on the top there uh, with our proposed budget that assumed a, a total water transactions of 1.44 million acre foot. It assumed we would keep the property tax at the existing rate of 0.0035%, and everything else is essentially as it was on budget. As Katano mentioned, it has a total overall rate increase for rates and charges of 21%, that is 13% for the first year and 8% for the <coughs> second year. And then the board was looking at various alternatives to make some changes to that budget. Um, first off, it <coughs> contemplated potentially decreasing the amount of water transactions that was assumed. Now, the 1.44 is Metropolitan's best guess of average condition and or average hydrologic condition. However, currently we're experiencing very low water sales, somewhere on the order of 1.2 million acre foot, which has caused us to draw down our unrestricted reserves pretty close to our minimum target. So the board was thinking, uh, or looks like is directing us to be a little bit more conservative in our estimate of our water transactions. Um, this does give us more certainty and us being able to hit our financial target. It does reduce the risk of us having to draw on reserves and it improves Metropolitan's uh, financial metrics like debt coverage and then also reduces the risk in us, us having to go for an unscheduled emergency rate increase if, for example, water transactions don't plan out as we intended. So that's one of the things that the board is considering and as you can see, many of these alternatives assume that lower water transactions base of 1.34 million acre foot. Um, the next thing that the board is considering is uh, an alternative way of uh, generating additional revenues is to increase the existing property tax rate. So this is the ad valorem property tax rate that is currently existing that recovers a portion of Metropolitan state water contract obligations. So under the existing act, Metropolitan is under certain circumstances allowed to increase that to collect a larger portion of our state water project costs. So we could increase that rate above the 0.0035%, which has actually been fixed since fiscal year 2014 is the last time we pegged it at that rate. So if we were to increase that rate, as you can see, there's various alternatives on the table. Um, to increase at some as high as 0.0104%. That would generate additional revenues and allow us to have smaller increase on the total rates and charges. And you can see the overall rates and charges on the right in a lot of those scenarios is lower as a result. In addition, there are a couple of other uh, cost cutting and additional revenues that are assumed in some of these scenarios. Uh, in one of the scenarios, it was contemplated to potentially reduce uh, the expenditure in our conservation program. Um, let's see, overall, I would say that the uh, there's been a bit of a ramp up in this biennium uh, on conservation expenditures because we received some grant funding that is requiring a matching. It's also causing higher activity in the conservation program, so our expenditures are higher than they have been in the past. Uh, any reductions in the program would essentially uh, cause us to uh, not comply with the obligations of those grants would mean we would probably lose them. Um, so there would be a substantial cutback if we reduce it. If we were to reduce the conservation expenditures in the short term, it would only reduce the rates by about 1%, the overall rate, and that would, as soon as we ramp the program back to its kind of like its standard process. So overall, the consensus with the board was that it uh, they should continue, you know, the long-term commitment to continued funding conservation. And I think there, there wasn't a lot of support for reducing the conservation program. Uh, the next item there is uh, new revenue. So we have quite a lot of water stored. Um, there's been some conversation as to perhaps we could 
sell some of that water and storage to a non-member agency to generate some additional revenues. Now, there was a, generally a consensus uh, among the board that it would probably be good to pursue that and see if we can use those funds to um, add to our um, unrestricted reserves and reduce some of our financial risks. What is shown here, though, is in some of these alternatives, we would assume that we would generate those revenues and therefore, therefore allow us to set the rates lower. So you're essentially assuming that these um, new revenues take place and you're uh, relying on them in order to shore up your budget. So that's what that 60 million a year refers to, that we would sell a certain amount of water out of storage over the two years in the biennium. Um, in addition, there's an item there to reduce the uh, existing department loan and budget um, up to $18 million per year. There is a lot of feedback from the board for us to look for ways to reduce our O&M expenditures in the short run, and I think we're going to continue to pursue that. Um, so without going through each one of these alternatives, um, those are essentially the different items that the board is contemplating. The, the options that are coming going to come in April or some combination of these things. Um, and the next couple of slides kind of walk through a, a little bit more detail because the rate increases shown here are the overall increase in rates and charges. But of course, the actual charges that a member agency pays relate to the uh, water transactions they purchase. So they're more correlated to uh, treated and untreated full service rates. So if you go to the next slide, please. Um, so first off, this is the overall rate increases, and it also shows the uh, projected for the next two years out. And you can actually see the, the rate increase over two years, which is the simple sum of the two years of the biennium, and then the four years. A um, couple of things to point out if you uh, base the budget on one-time actions, like one-time revenues or one-time cost cuts, as soon as those expenditures or revenues come back in year three, you will then need to increase rates and charges again. So those actions are essentially only pushing off the rate increase temporarily uh, and then bringing them back in year three. And you can see that in the yellow scenarios where uh, the rates are fairly high in year three as those expenditures uh, come back. <laughs> yeah. Next slide, please. Uh, this is the untreated full service rate I alluded to earlier, and you can see the percent increase for the various scenarios. And then the next slide has the uh, treated full service rate for the various scenarios. Um, Katana, I think I would stop here, hand it back to you. Thank you, Anna. So as I said, you if you look at this list, there are about two to three items that the board is proposing to move forward. We definitely were asked to bring back only scenarios that had 1.34 million acre feet of water. So that's what we're preparing for the board for consideration next Tuesday, which we hope that the board will adopt the budget at that time. I will stop here and EJ, I'll give it back to you or the board to ask questions. Thank you very much, Katana. I'll throw it to the board. Uh, before uh, we ask some questions, Katana, uh, at the board meeting when this was presented, the board did give you direction of bringing back three alternatives for next time around. Maybe you can discuss those a little bit more so that we can focus on what is being presented. Yes, they are not quite these scenarios. They tweaked a few of them, but can we go back maybe one slide? Let me see which one has rates. Maybe the first slide that are now presented. Yeah, stay right here. So based on the board discussion last time, there's a little bit of variation, but they are looking at, I believe, 2B, which is 1.34 million acre feet of water at 0.0099% or 90%. And that would be a budget of rates at seven six what changes that are slightly is every scenario they're asking us to cut 18 million dollars of of uh, services so that will <clears throat> probably drop that scenario to about six six instead of 1.34 million acre feet of water 
And, and so there's a little bit of variation, but slight, I think 2B is one of them. The second one was, I believe, um, I believe scenario 1A, no, not 1A, 6-6. Uh, six, six. Scenario 6 in some variation of that with cuts and 60 million new money. The 60 million new money, and there's another, maybe this other page might be better than this. Maybe the next the next slide, actually, because it does give one more. I think you mean which the previous. One, which one is the previous? Okay, go back. And one more, yeah, there you go, this one. So you see that 60 million of new revenue. So that scenario 6A is probably one of the scenarios they're contemplating, uh, but not at 0.35, but more or less at 0.55. And I believe the other one is scenario 1B, but at, at 0.134 million acre feet of water. So it, they are not exactly these scenarios, but there's some little variation. Each scenario is cutting 18 million a year from services. And a couple of scenarios have that 60 million new revenues. So it's a variation, but it's close to that. Okay, thank you. Um, so, any uh, questions from any other board members or uh, comments? No, thank you. Go ahead, go ahead. Hey, everybody. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. If I missed it, just tell me again. But um, when you're saying $60 million of new revenue, where exactly is that coming from? It is still a little bit speculative, but there's an assumption that we could sell some of our water. Uh, it, I, it, I don't think we have, I cannot tell you right now exactly what that will be, but it's something that the board believes that there is a possibility to be able to do that. So we, we do have an assumption, and I believe it's the 0 0.0070 at 60 million and 18 million cut. So that gives you roughly that 8.5, 8.5 and some change but that scenario as it does assume that we will be able to do a deal of selling water mm. sometime between nine and two years okay and then the other question i have is the 18 million dollars you're trying to look to reduce i mean what exactly does that entail or maybe just the overarching explanation of that similarly we did bring and if you look at this same presentation, we show cuts, but we also show impacts. Some of the cuts I told the board, we couldn't take some of the cuts that people proposed, but the general manager committed that we will find cuts that will not be too painful. So that will be some work that we have to do within this budget. Okay, and then all of these, except for the one conservation remains the same. So yeah, all these are go technically what I just sort of maybe poorly did is we're only coming back with three to four scenarios. I think right now okay. it's about four, three. One, so let me make it simple. Everything will have a 1.34 million acre feet of water. They both made that decision last time. They said every scenario that comes back to mm -hmm. them, only 1.34 million acre feet of water, number one. They also said for the property tax, they're... They can be 0 0.0055, 0 0.007, 0 0.0099. Those three okay. scenarios were requested back as some variation of also cutting 18 million. For each scenario, we cutting 18 million of services. And maybe one or two of those scenarios showing uh, new revenue. So that's what we're bringing back. But the, <clears throat> what's certain for us is that 1.34 million acre feet of water is certain. And it's certain that we're going to include some level of property tax. They just haven't decided which one yet. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Thank you very much. Much, much more clear. I appreciate that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Thank you, Greg. Do you have any questions? No, thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, Chitano, I you mentioned earlier like that 
one of the scenarios we're going to bring back, if I <clears throat> understood you, was uh, I think alternative B, a 5B, but with 1.34 and 0 0.007, did you say that? 5B. I don't think I have a scenario of 0 0.0035 now. I think I have a, a scenario of 0 0.0055, but with a 60 million and cutting 18 million. So that scenario is coming back at one point. So this the start point is 1.34 million acre feet of water, 0 0.005, 60 million, maybe 18 million cut. So some level of that scenario might be coming back. But there is a scenario, definitely one or two <laughs> scenarios we were told that we need to show the new revenue. Okay, so the, the, the revenue component is an interesting one because it's a one-time revenue, correct? Correct. And yeah. can you shed more light on it than selling water that, is, that we have available in storage? Um, who would it be sold to? What storage pod is it coming out of? Do we I, do you have that information? I, I know we did not hear it, it previously. Yeah, so I have I just saw that Devin is online. So and he has <laughs> thank you, Devin. So he can he can probably shade more light on this than I can. Devin? Th thanks, Katano. And and Director Alvarez, are you able to hear me? Uh, we can hear you loud and clear. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Good afternoon. Um, so I v very much agree with with the the comment that that Catano had made earlier in response to Director Houston's question. Um, th this is an item where there is some sp sp speculation around the number, um, but to give you a sense of the kinds of things that we are looking at, recall that last year um, we were able to structure a deal with the Imperial Irrigation District and the San Diego County Water Authority near the end of the year that was related to the Colorado River package that was being put together. And under that deal, we were able to sell 50,000 acre feet of water to the Water Authority at our full service rates, um, including our supply rate. And the Water Authority backed off of their purchase of their transfer and exchange water from IID. What that allowed IID to do was then to contribute that water to the Colorado River system, and they got paid by the federal government to do that. Um, it was a solution that allowed more water to be contributed to the Colorado River. Um, that generated some revenue for us. And I, I share that as an example of the kind of arrangements that we may be able to pull off in the next year or so. Um, the reason why I uh, emphasize the, the speculative piece is we're in those discussions and we're working with folks now, but the mm -hmm. timing of when those kind of structures come together and the amount that comes through is, is a bit speculative. So I believe that the 60 million is a, kind of a thumb sketch of what could be produced. I, I would characterize it a bit <laughs> as a stretch goal. But I hope that gives you a sense of the kind of thing that we're talking about. We're in discussions directly with Imperial Irrigation District this year because they have commitments to reduce water um, on the Colorado River as part of the California package. And they're having a hard time coming up with those supplies because of some environmental compliance issues you probably read about in the newspaper. One of the options is for us to be able to work with them to turn back water we might step into their shoes and get paid for it. So that's one of the ways that we would be able to to generate some of this revenue. Okay, so kind of gets the potential scenario, but some of this then is maybe sixty million, maybe uh, might be fifty million. Is there a range that you have? Is the assumption here is sixty million and. Uh, the corollary would be if there's a range, can we see what the uh, what that range would uh, <clears throat> imply in terms of the uh, overall rating? Kind of a sensitivity analysis. Uh, so, director, I think for, go, go ahead. Yeah. go ahead, David. Yeah, yeah, yeah. director Alvarez. I think that sixty million is a um, <laughs> kind of a reasonable stretch number for us. Um, I'm loath to 
to to sit down and give you a, a a range without affecting those discussions with with those parties. And and I just want to be careful around that. But to give you a sense, the revenue benefit that we received last year by doing the fifty thousand acre foot deal with IID in San Diego was roughly sixteen and a half million dollars. Um, we we believe that we can do better than that. And the reason for that is because the IID does have an agreement with the federal government to turn back water this year that is at a higher cost than what we did last year. So we think that there is a higher number we could hit, but um, whether you can do that for multiple years on end, you know, I'm pretty confident that we can do something this year. Um, next year, it becomes more difficult. And the reason for that is because once IID is able to get their farmers to start contributing, then um, they're able to start contributing on their own and they may not need that assistance anymore. Okay, and so that was Go ahead, Katana. I was just gonna say, for our budget purposes, I would not wanna arrange, I would have to be saying, David, just give me a number. <laughs> just, just as a math side, for us, we would, we would want a number, not a range, but, I certainly can understand where we land. It should be reasonable, but this was what we were, we were provided with. But we would always want one number, not a range for us. But Devin, do you have any more comments on that? Well, I, I, I agree with you from a planning perspective, Catano, and, and this is the number that Adele has been comfortable putting out there as something that, I, again, I would characterize it as a stretch goal for us. But I also... I can't remember who it was on this on this discussion, but somebody referred to it as kind of one time uh, money. This this is not a long term revenue um, uh, structure that we're looking at. It's it's a short term structure that we're we're trying to achieve. So yeah, the sixty million and the eighteen are both gonna be one time money. One time because the cuts that we will take are not impactful. Will be one time if we took substantive cuts and eliminate services that those will be probably could be ongoing but the way this is being framed right now is we're trying to find things that we could just temporarily freeze or cut to get to that 18 million dollars and so those two items will be one time and, and that's why if you go to the next slide just the one that shows four years yeah that's why if you look at the budget, then you look at 2027, 2028, those four years, you'll see the increases for the anything in yellow. Once you got get out of that budget, you'll see that it dramatically increases because you are now picking up the same services or the one time money is gone. So you have to account for that. that so technically, it provides a structural imbalance budget if you do that, because then year three, you're going to have to backfill for that loss revenue. Or reduction in expense for this for the 18 million. <coughs> All right. So, so, so the, the 60 million truly is a one time revenue and and it's a maximum. It could be less, but it but if I heard everybody correctly, you're comfortable that you probably already get 60 million and that's going to base the budget on. Correct? I think that's what Devin said, yes. It, Director Alvarez, I wasn't actually able to hear the last part of what you said, I'm sorry. I was just saying that the 60 million is one time revenue and the maximum that we would be able to generate, but you feel comfortable that you would be able to generate that one time revenue of $60 million. Because it's a maximum. Yeah, I I would I would characterize it as a as a stretch goal, but it is something that we would be working towards. And and frankly, we're gonna um, we're gonna be committed to working towards that, regardless of what happens in the in the budget process. Um, it's it's something that that we may need to be in negotiations with these folks. In fact, my my team is in negotiations with them now. So what we're trying to do is is give you a sense of what could come out of that. But it is one time money. It's um, once that's gone, it's going to affect your uh, discussions about needing to increase rates again in the future. Um, so there is that aspect of it. The the other thing that I would mention is we want to be flexible with respect to the way we talk about that revenue. I gave you examples. 
Um, but but we should not be locked into the way that we generate that revenue. So that gives us some flexibility. One thing I would note is with water transactions of 1.34 million acre feet, that is a conservative approach. I think it's appropriately conservative and we appreciate that guidance from the board. But if we sell more than that, that is also generating additional revenue. And I, I hope that the board is flexible and they're thinking about that. So when you said you that Generating additional revenue. The water sales are going to be generating additional revenue. My my point there is that if we're using a conservative water sales estimate, if we exceed those water sales in one of the two years, that's also generating oh. additional revenue. Oh. I, I'd be surprised if you get, if you sell one point three four million. I, I uh, look forward to to taking that bet, Director Alvarez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I know Anna has his hand up, but I just want to say that keep in mind, everyone, that we really are concerned about our reserves. So any money we generate extra really need to ought to go to reserves and support sort of bump those reserves up a little bit. It's you. We told you the last time that is one of my our main concerns. So Anna, did you want to add something? Yeah, I just wanted to add for clarity since we're saying 60 million, right? So the assumption here is that we're going to generate an additional 60 million dollars per year for each of the years in the biennium, right? So it's 60 and then another 120. 60, yeah. 120 total, right? And if you if you set rates lower for that, right, that's kind of what's assumed here in these these yellow scenarios. Uh, and just just for reference here, that additional 60 million dollars a year allows you to potentially lower the overall rates by about three percent so you can lower it by three percent over the biennium you add three percent back in the third year so looking at the third and fourth year you know the following years that includes tier one It assumes some version of the full scale Pure Water Southern California project coming online or starting full phase of construction in 2027. That is right. Okay. And I'm sure we look at what would happen if you did not do Pure One. I know you don't have those numbers today, but maybe you can bring that back. Yeah, actually we do. Um, as part of the first workshop, we presented a scenario that showed what would happen without pure water. It's essentially would reduce the rate increase in 2027 by about 6%. Uh, the reason it's so steep is because this, we're assuming a fairly um, steep ramp up of the pure water project. And I guess the only note I would add there is you know, while not everyone is thinking that the Pure Water Project in Southern California will be added, there are probably a long list of other projects that you could imagine in its place, right? Like this doesn't include any additional program for Bay Delta, doesn't include sites, doesn't include, uh, anyway, you can all think of, you know, East-West Conveyance, a long list of other potential projects that could take its place. So I would just caution uh, with the idea of thinking that there could be nothing in going forward. So the, the the idea would be that if, if you didn't have pure water, but you will have something and camp for water will at the end of the uh, process generate some uh, project or series of projects that are going to need to be uh, funded. So, but if we if we if there were no projects and looking at the rate increases for 27 and 28 instead of 16 percent, you're looking at 10 percent. For 27. I heard you yeah, that's, correctly. That's, I'm right, that's roughly what yeah, feet. that's that's roughly what he's saying, but we also know that there's so many more projects, not just pure water, that are coming through the pipe that we have not added. So right, the just, likelihood we that to, we will yeah. It's just a matter of setting the platform and then whatever is going to come through will come through. So okay. Yeah, without pure water, it's roughly 6% lower in 2027 and roughly 2% lower in 2028. It'll be 10 and 6. But if you look at the proposed, yes. Right. 
Well, I don't have any other questions right now. I think that there's still be some additional discussions on this. It'd be interesting to see the final um, decision making process. But thank you very much. Any other thank you. comments from the board members? Oh, Dr. Hi there. Everybody, I do have a quick question that, to finalize it out. So I understand you're going to narrow it down to three proposals, maybe four, but three proposals coming through April to the Met Board for discussion. Is that right? Correct. And we'll post those by Friday. So if anybody is looking for them late, late Friday, they should be posted. And my hope is on Tuesday, April 9th, that we get a board we are, we are bringing a board resolution and recommendation, so the board hopefully will make a decision then. And, and we are hopeful of that because we have a lot of debt that we're financing waiting for this budget to be approved. Okay. Got to understand. Thank you, Kaitano, because, yeah, it's obviously next week. Yes. <clears throat> and, and I mean, you know, my just... My pure gut on this, just looking at it, and I, you know, seeing this uh, group of plans. I mean, obviously, I, I, I agree personally to looking at the lowest sales potential, right, the 1.34, and yes. uh, the tax assessment probably the 0 0.007. Um, and I don't know, but maybe the scenario with and without the 60 million dollars, because it is a little speculative. Um, yeah. But that's just my two cents. So. I do look forward to seeing what you all come up with, let alone what the board massages potentially right come Monday, Tuesday. Um, so thank you very much for this information. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, if there's no more questions, we will move on. Chairman? May I? Yes. I'm looking at these figures on the last call of these increases and. You see, forty-eight percent increase. That's a big jump, and uh, uh, I, I think we uh, uh, all we're doing is looking at how much more people are going to pay for the same amount of water. I'm really concerned about the the, uh, the amount of increases over the years. It's like it's an automatic, and no one's really concerned about. It. Go, can somebody go back? Go back to that slide, maybe. The overall rate increase. Yeah, so, so those are the four, the totals at the very end of four year increase. Those are the four year increases, the lowest being 33%, the rest to your point, the highest being 48%. But uh, I also want to say to your comment that we have we have shown the board going back to 20, I believe early, at least 10 years out. And one of the concerns we've had is we've, really kept our rates low. And so mm -hmm. part of this concern in dipping into reserves and utilizing a lot of our and not raising rates for quite a while really got us to where we are today. So, but yeah, that represents a four year increases, not the two years. Look at hurt. Okay, and the, and the 48% would be one scenario, the more likely scenario if I heard uh, the town of property would be the 41%, right? I don't know which one yet because it has to be at 1.34 million acre feet. So anything that's 1.44, we're not presenting. We're presenting 1.34 million acre feet of water. So mm -hmm. the most likely scenario will be around those increases that maybe 33, 36%. Because we, we still have, this does not factor the fact that the board wants 18 million cut in all the scenarios. But that information will be available on Friday. Yes, will be available by Friday afternoon. That's my hope. We're racing to, as soon as we're down here, we're going back to getting those reports ready. Any other questions for Dr. Deere? Okay, well, thank you very much. If there's no thank other questions. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to the uh, water supply conditions update. Mr. General Ray. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, we felt that this was extremely timely given the uh, number of storms that have come through uh, through February and March. Uh, 
And so uh, for this item 4B, it's a water supply conditions update. Uh, we do have a Nusha Rezabian, if I pronounce that correctly, uh, resource specialist for Metropolitan Water District. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Nusha Rezabian with Metropolitan. So we'll have a brief update on our water supply conditions. And you probably know that we've had a relatively dry start to this water year. And I think this is illustrated very well um, from this photo out of Phillips Station in the uh, within the Sierra Nevada. And so this was taken at the beginning of January from the department's first snow survey of the water year. And you can see those intermittent patches of snow don't really bode so well with what we thought this year would look like. But just two months later, you can see just how different those conditions look like at the end of February, given the many storms that came in during the months of March and February. And so today I'll talk about many of those improvements that we saw. So if we just look throughout our different watersheds, beginning with the Northern Sierra precipitation, you can see from the orange line that so far this water year, we've gotten about 41 inches of precip cumulative precipitation at the eight station index, and that's about 95% of normal. Now, these increases are great, but you might notice from that orange line that it took a, about until the beginning of March to actually reach normal. So again, another illustration of how we had a pretty dry start to this water year. Now, when we look at our snowpack, you can see from the orange line here that there's been quite a bit of gains if you look at, um, on that line. And so as of last week, the snowpack was around 32.6 inches of snow water content, which is 115% of the April 1 average. And I'll be doing the comparison with the April 1 average because that's typically when we see the snow beginning to melt. Um, and the peak of the season. Now, since actually these slides were posted, we've gotten a few more inches. And so it actually did peak on April 1st. It wasn't a joke. It was uh, around 35 um, inches of snow water content. So really great improvements. Um, it might look like they will begin to melt soon, but we'll just have to see if another storm comes through. Um, now, moving on to Lake Oroville, you can see that last week, the storage there was around 3.07 million acre feet. And it's since the storms began around mid-December, the reservoir has gained about 740,000 acre feet. And actually this past weekend, the reservoir increased by another about 45,000 acre feet. And so in total in the month of March, about 110,000 acre feet or so was gained within the reservoir. Now, of course, when, that, when the levels at Oroville become higher than some of the flood control regulations, releases have to be made from the reservoir. So you might have seen that at the end of January, the department began to make releases out of the main spillway at Lake Oroville. And so in total, about 420,000 acre feet has been released off of that spillway this calendar year. Now, moving on to San Luis, this is a pretty interesting story at San Luis this year. It currently is at a deficit in meeting its carryover target into moving into the next year. Um, the target's around 800,000 acre feet. And so because of that deficit, there's been, that's kind of affected some of the availability of supplies that we've received from the department and the allocations that we've been seeing as well. And so some things to note is that we kind of saw a decline in those storage levels in early fall due to the salinity requirements within the delta as well as the pretty dry fall that we had. But you might see that the reservoir has been able to increase since that low point near the end of December. Um, and while we have seen a multitude of storms, unfortunately, we haven't seen as big of an increase in San Luis than we normally would see due to a lot of regulations within the Delta. And that's been due to regulations surrounding smelts, uh, most recently due to steelhead. Um, and so that kind of has affected the ability to export more water and put more water into San Luis. Now, the good news on this, though, is exports have increased since last week. And actually, as of today, the reservoir was sitting at around 535,000 acre feet. So hopefully we'll be on the upward trend within that reservoir in the next few months. Now, quickly on the Colorado side of things, the snowpack there is a little about 16 inches of snow water content as of last week. Um, actually, today it's about almost 17 inches. So again, increases have been seen within the upper Colorado River Basin side as well. And it really picked up during the months of February and March, just like we saw within the Northern Sierra as well. All right, now turning to our surplus and drought management at Metropolitan. Of course, the big news that we saw recently was that the department increased the allocation from 15% to 30%. 
And so for metropolitan, that allocation amounts to about 570,000 acre feet of supplies. And so that update by the department at the end of March, it reflects the hydrologic conditions as of March 1st. So it reflects all the improvements that we saw up until that point. Um, it also reflects a lot of those regulatory conditions that we saw. And so this is pretty good news for us on that front. But the even better news is that we do expect the allocation to go up a little bit more this next month in their allocation update at the end of April. And that's because that allocation update will reflect conditions as of April 1st. And so it will reflect those big improvements that we saw during the month of March and I showed on that Northern Sierra slide. And so what does this all mean in terms of our supplies and demand? So our statewide project supplies are about, again, 570,000 acre feet. It reflects that 30% allocation. And our Colorado River supplies are around 840,000 acre feet. Now, a couple of things to note with our Colorado River supplies is that reflected within this are many of the system conservation agreements that Metropolitan's board approved at the end of December. And those agreements are with a lot of our fouling partners along the Colorado River. And it also reflects the Bureau's higher priority water use adjustment. And right now it's about negative 133,000 acre feet, which is a pretty conservative number, but every year that number changes from month to month. And so we'll probably see it not be as conservative as the year goes on. So in total, our supplies are around 1.42 million acre feet and our demands are around 1.45 million acre feet. Now this is a demand number that includes some of our obligations as well as um, some of our system losses. So the consumptive and replenishment portion of that demand number that you see here is around 1.35 million acre feet. So given where things sit as of today, our demands are still slightly higher than our supply. So technically we have a gap of about 30,000 acre feet, but we're pretty much balanced at this point because we're both taking from storage as well as being able to put into storage at this allocation and supply level. And so um, one of those great things that we'll be able to do is actually fill Diamond Valley Lake this year, as well as put into some of our other in-region storage accounts. And with that, I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Director Gray, do you have any questions? No, no thank you. It's pretty self explanatory. Thank you. If we can go back to the previous, the last slide. Sure. So that goes back to the assumption of 1.45 in demand, even though the budget and all of the projections are 1.34. Well, so the consumptive and replenishment demands are around 1.35. So overall, we're in pretty good condition. <laughs> really great condition, yeah. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> with that, um, we are done with our information items, and we will move on to directly comments and future agenda items. So, uh, Director Neal, do you have any comments? No, I don't. Thank you. Director Williams. No, this is great news. Director Houston. Uh, my comment would be, and I would just ask our staff, EJ, if you could forward copies or a link when the budget proposals are posted. Oh, and agenda get posted. You all could just forward that to us. Um, so we don't have to go searching for it come Friday. Thank you. And Director Gray, do you have any comments? Just thank you to all the presenters this morning. Thank you. And I don't have any further comments, so we are adjourned. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you.